and welcome back to this week's QUTV News Update. I'm Colleen McCormick. And I'm Sarah Valcamp. On this week's update, we'll hear the President's thoughts about underage drinking on campus and a fine finish to the Lady Hawks volleyball season. Topping our news this week, underage consumption and possession of alcohol is neither a new nor unexpected violation of the law. However, as the ages of those arrested for violation become younger and the consequences more deadly, the city of Quincy is not taking the situation lightly. Alcohol is the most commonly used and abused drug among youth in the United States. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 11% of all alcohol consumed in the United States is by underage users. However, the serious consequences that underage drinking entails is what most seem to either forget or ignore. Quincy Police Department Records Supervisor Susan Valcamp explains what happens after being caught either consuming or possessing alcohol under the age of 21. The best thing to do is to go to court and ask for supervision. A lot of times I see where youth don't go to court. If you don't go to court, then you automatically lose your license for six months. If you go and you ask for supervision, and you only lose your license for three months. From January 1st through October 31st of this year, multiple arrests have been made for the illegal consumption of alcohol by minors between the ages of 14 and 20. And besides being arrested for underage drinking, other deadly consequences can also arise. The decision to get behind the wheel after consuming alcohol is one of the worst a person can make. Chief of Police Robert Copley explains the zero tolerance law related to underage drinking and driving. Zero tolerance uh, basically gives officers a tool to work with underage drinkers that are driving. If they are found to be uh, under the influence of alcohol, but not to the DUI point, but just that they, they have alcohol in their system, they can be issued a, a zero tolerance uh, citation that uh, would uh, then impact their driver's license. Many factors, such as peer pressure at parties and life on a college campus, can persuade a minor to consume alcohol as it may appear as part of the culture. And although it may seem like a popular idea at the time, being caught consuming or possessing alcohol underage will result in financial burdens from fines, the loss of your license, and an arrest on your permanent record. From national policies to Quincy University policy, in light of recent events, A review of the Quincy University policy on underage consumption and possession of alcohol is necessary. While Key East campus is not designated as a dry campus, residence halls do fall under those categories. Both Garner and Heline are strictly alcohol free, meaning consuming or possessing alcohol in those dorms will result in serious consequences. As far as other campus houses, certain restrictions do apply. The policy itself is more specific to individual suites, rooms, so all students within a suite or a room have to be 21 or older in order for that suite or room or house or apartment to have alcohol. While the law and QU policies clearly state that underage drinking in the U.S. is illegal, college campuses can't always stop it. However, QU Security tries to prevent underage students from drinking alcohol on campus as best they can. There is no one answer to this, you know. I think it's part education. I, I think it's, it's part making sure that we have other activities to do. I, I think it's part enforcement. Um, but I also think it's not just a security job. And it's not just the job of the RAs or the RDs. It's not just a student affairs thing. It's a campus thing. Lathrop also says the school is cracking down on the consequences for underage consumption. QU is handling these issues more seriously to ensure safety and awareness. He also says QU is trying to find more activities for students that don't involve drinking. On QU's campus, the saying rings true. For those who are not 21, think before you drink. Although it is clear that underage drinking is not acceptable on campus, what do students think about it? QTV asked students across campus to find out. It's so important to focus on academics and the aspect of partying. Um, and I only say that because I feel like it's come up before where um, drinking has been taken to a level of, or it's gotten people very sick and very, um, and having to take to the hospitals. There is drinking on, camp, uh, underage drinking 
to you. I'm not going to deny that. I'm just glad I'm in a group of people that are not involved in that. Ever since I've been here, you know, I'm a junior this year, and ever since I've been here, it's definitely been a big, big issue, especially with underclassmen. I was talking the other day about how, um, you know, the first weekend of school being in is always a bunch of freshmen getting busted for underage drinking for the first time. Underage drinking is very much a part of Cube's culture and it's very much expected. While we all know it's legal, it happens, it's almost an ex expectation that underagers are going to drink, whether it be on campus, off campus, it happens. And basically it's become just related to what the school is to a point. Though opinions on alcohol consumption on campus may vary, the effects of alcohol on the mind and body of a young adult are not new facts for students. Excessive alcohol use can cause physical problems for your body, including damage to your brain and liver, but it can also have devastating effects on a young adult's mental health. Alcohol use is strongly linked to depression and anxiety, especially in college students. This type of behavior can lead to a vicious cycle of feeling anxious or depressed causing an individual to drink more. When a person can no longer remove themselves from this cycle, it can develop into alcoholism. Lindsay Wood from Quincy's Cornerstone recommends that students watch out for each other. The first step someone should take if they believe a friend has a problem is to talk to that friend and raise their concerns. The second step is to talk to someone who can help make a difference in that student's life. Whether this is by talking to a family member of that student a resident assistance in the dorms, or alerting the counseling department on campus, someone who is going to care for that student needs to know that there is a problem. Though you might risk losing the friendship of that person for a while, the health and safety of your friend is much more important. A concern that I have is that no one really plans on becoming an alcoholic. Uh, it's, it's really a slow fade uh, and a series of very small choices that contribute to that. Wood says that even small groups can make a big difference in a campus culture, and that even if two students make the decision to not drink and still be active on campus, it can have an amazing effect on the larger campus. With underage drinking being such a hot topic around campus, it is only natural to consider changes to the issue. QU President Robert Gervaisi has been wanting to have an open discussion about rethinking the drinking age since 2008. In 2008, President Gervaisi signed the Amethyst Initiative with 135 other university presidents across the nation. The initiative looks to open dialogue about amending the drinking age of 21. The main point of the contention is removing the National Minimum Drinking Age Act. The act imposes a 10% funding penalty to a state's highway program if the state places the legal drinking age below 21. The initiative claims this act as a barrier to having a meaningful discussion. While the initiative has not seen any recent updates, President Gervaisi believes QU can foster a healthy student environment without changing the legislation. I, I think there are a number of uh, uh, gatherings that actually celebrate the fact that you don't have to have alcohol to have a good time. And, uh, and I think the more we can, we can do that, the more we can have a, a, a continually much, much safer and much more secure environment for all students. This week we saw the first snowfall of the season. Is there more to come? We'll we have a check on the forecast coming up. And we find out if the rumor about changes to the meal plan is true. Stay with us. Andrew, last week the Chicago Bears, our team got annihilated by the Green Bay Packers. How many more games do we have left in the year? Seven. <sighs> That's seven more episodes of the Bears cast. That's almost two months. I don't know if I can handle any more of the Chicago Bears team. Well, hang in there, Ethan, because we have a responsibility to break down the week that was and the week that will be on the Bears cast with myself, Andrew McCulloch, and my co-host, Ethan Cowgill. And you can listen to us every Wednesday on the QUTV's channel 97 or on QUTV's Facebook page. I, don't, I just, I gotta take a break from this team. I just, I don't know if I can do it. Where are you going, man? We gotta break down the game. Welcome back. 
Have you noticed anything different about the meals in the Hawks Hangout? The rumor is true. It was made official last week that students are no longer obligated to get meals only when it is considered meal time. Meals are now available all day, every day at the Hawks Hangout. This change is expected to work better with the busy schedules of students. Make improvements to the dining experience for our students here. Um, one of the ways that we thought we could do that this year was uh, because of, of the healthy options that we offer was to be able to eliminate the meal equivalency periods uh, at the hangout. There you have it. No more spending your flex money on meals or waiting for that clock to hit, hit meal time to grab some grub. It's been a bitterly cold start to the month of November, and it doesn't look like it'll get better anytime soon. In fact, we might actually be in for, that's right, snow. Weatherman Stephen Philippi is in the Weather Center with the latest. Stephen? Thanks, Sarah. This week, we're talking partly cloudy skies and nasty temperatures. We kick off your Friday with sunny skies, 37 degrees, then heading on into our Saturday. That's right, snow people. I've been anticipating it all year. 39 degrees on that Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are. Partly cloudy skies, 36 degrees on that Sunday. And you know, like I said, just nasty temperatures this week and partly cloudy skies. We hit it your Monday, 32 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Tuesday, 30 degrees. Then heading on into our Wednesday, partly cloudy skies, 37. Then we at least make the 40 degree temperature mark on our Thursday, which is sunny skies for you. And you know, I mean, don't be, uh, don't be a hero out there. Make sure you bundle up. This is going to be a tough week, and uh, make sure you don't expose too many of your body parts. You might get frostbite. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm sending it back to you guys. Thanks, Stephen. Coming up, we get the scoop on how QU students had the chance to ask a historical figure some pressing questions. And could the Hawks football team build on a four-game winning streak? We'll have the answer next. Hello, Quincy University. Do you like helping people? Do you like reaching out to the less fortunate? And do you like hanging out with your friends on the weekend? Well, Quincy University's Haiti Connection has an opportunity for you. This Saturday, November 15th, is Haiti Night at Jed's. All proceeds from the event will go towards the people of Haiti. So come on out this Saturday from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m to support Haiti and help those in need. Thank you. Welcome back. It had to happen sometime. The men's soccer team finally lost a game. And the football team had a close game this weekend. Sports direc director Ethan Cowgill is here with more. Ethan? Thanks, guys. And fall sports here heating up. Men's soccer, they're just one game away from capping off their 21-game undefeated streak with the GLVC championship. The only problem, the Indianapolis Greyhounds standing as the final conference contenders. I'm going to take you out to Legends Stadium where the Hawks are hosting the championship game. And the story of this game would be the corner kicks by the Greyhounds. As you can see, Max Rota here for the Greyhounds, he's going to headbutt it in for the goal. The Hawks had their chances. Taylor Reese in front of the net can't quite get it. And then there's Ethan Venverlo, Point Blake. Again, he can't quite get it either. And the Greyhounds would go on to win this one with a final of 3-1, to one, handing the Hawks their first defeat of the year. Reese added his fourth goal of the year, though. However, the season is not over for the men's soccer team as they earn the number one seed in the Midwest region for the NCAA tournament, and they're going to end up hosting the winner of Drury and Tiffin. Now, for the women, their season did come to an end against Missouri S&T on penalty kicks, 4-3 uh, to three on those kicks as well. Megan Swanton, she had two saves. She earned her 11th shutout of the year, but the Hawks couldn't muster up enough offense to get the victory. Now, on the gridiron, Tom Padgett has QU's football team on a four-game winning streak. But when Sherman State came to town, they put the brakes on that winning streak. As you can see here, it was a very low-scoring matchup. Sherman State nails the victory, just pulls it out. Very close game, 17-4. QU allowed seven sacks. They couldn't quite get their offense going as well either. And they're going to end the season hosting McKendry. Now for volleyball, they're going to end the, the, for a week in Hawk sports that wasn't very good. They ended it on a high note, a silver lining, if you will. QU product, who's played high school here, and she spent four years here at Quincy University, Summer Holder, she ended her career on a high note, and she had a chance to reflect on it before her last game. 
since we have Coach Crank, I've learned a lot, a lot of system work, a lot of, um, he's taught me a lot of technique, and I appreciate it, and I think I've, I've improved every year since I've been here. And the Lady Hawks, they would respond, sending Summer Holder and the other seniors off on a high note with their victory against Maryville 3-2. to two. That's going to wrap it up for this week in QU Sports. As always, come back next week for more coverage. I'm going to send it back to the news desk. Thanks, Ethan. It was back to the future at the John Wood Mansion last week as Quincy got a visit from Honest Abe. George Buss appeared as Abraham Lincoln at the John Wood Mansion on November 8th for a mock press conference. Local residents, media, and even QU students had the chance to ask him a variety of questions. Topic ranged from politics to his favorite food, and the president did not disappoint. Mary Lincoln's crushed almond cake. <clears throat> now, it's heavy. It's like a brick when it's <laughs> it. And you cut it. You can only have about one or two pieces at a time because it sticks with you. The event was hosted by the Quincy Historical Society and the National Abraham Lincoln Society. That's all for this week's QUTV News Update. And as always, make sure to tune in online on Facebook or Channel 97 on campus for more news anytime. For the entire QUTV team, I'm Colleen McCormick. And I'm Sarah Valkamp. Until next week, Hawks, keep soaring high.